So this is the first question of the second passage in the full length five bio biochem um, section. And so it says from table one, which bacteria can use galactose as an energy source? So let's take a look at table one. All right, so we have table one, we have the bacteria. This column shows us the energy source. We go down and we see odorebacter. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it can use glucose and its isomers. Um, so here you guys just need to know that galactose is an isomer of glucose. So um, same formula, but just looks looks just a little bit different. So the answer for us is going to be odorebacter. It's not going to be um, this bacteria since this is just glucose, not galactose. Specifically, we have to look at the fact that galactose is an isomer of glucose. So let's go down, and that makes C the correct answer. All right, so this is the second question of the second passage. And it says, from table one, in which metabolic processes or which metabolic process are GI tract, GI tract bacteria directly involved? So let's take a look at A. It says conversion of PS into short chain fatty acids. So let's take a look at the energy sources here again. So we have PS here, PS here, PS here. And let's get the products. We have acetate, butyrate. Uh, we also have lactate here. So again, what is PS? PS indicates polysaccharides. Don't forget to read this. And so is it true? Are we, are we getting a product of short-chain fatty acids? And yes, yes we are. Acetates and butyrates, these are short-chain fatty acids. Now lactates are a little bit different, but acetates and butyrates are definitely short-chain fatty acids. What are fatty acids? Remember, fatty acids are anything that look like this. So these are basically just carboxylates. And then this R group can be quite long. So for example, butyrate. Um, butyrate could be, so butyrate is actually only four carbons, one, two, three, four. And so this is a structure of a butyrate, and this is a short-chain fatty acid. Um, even though there's, uh, I guess this little tail is three carbons, um, this tail can get super long, like 15, 16, 17 carbons. So three is actually not that bad. You know, it's, it's pretty short. So butyrate is a short-chain fatty acid. Um, so is acetate. Acetate is about as short as you can get. There you go. And like I said, lactate's a little bit different, so we'll just kind of skip over that. But again, what we see here is polysaccharides being changed transformed into these uh, these fatty acids here. So A looks like a pretty pretty re reasonable answer. Let's take a look at B absorption absorption of amino acids. We don't have any idea. We have no no clues as to what amino acids are being absorbed here. All we see are acetates, succinates, um, polysaccharides, glucose, you know, glucosamine, glucose, right? So we have not, no no information about amino acids here. So amino acids are probably not going to be related to our answer at all. Fermentation of dietary fibers into peptides. Again, we don't even see any peptides. You know, again, no, no, no amino acids, no proteins, no peptides, no mention of that anywhere here. So that's probably not going to be the answer. And finally, says absorption of monosaccharides. So this can be a little tricky since we do see monosaccharides like glucose and its isomers and glucose here again, but we don't see anything about its absorption, and neither does it say anything, or nor does it say anything about absorption. Um, anywhere else in the passage, and, espe and especially it doesn't say anything about it in table one. So we know it can't be absorption of monosaccharides since it doesn't talk about absorbing these monosaccharides. So A is probably going to be the closest answer, the best answer we have, which makes it the answer for this problem. Okay, so this is question three of the passage, which I believe makes it question seven overall. And it says, based on table one, what is the most likely associated, what is most likely associated with a reduction in gram-positive bacteria? Um, for some reason, these were crossed out already um, on my exam. I don't know how, but let's let's just ignore that. So A says increase in acetate production. So again, we're getting rid of gram-positive bacteria. So let's say we're getting rid of this guy. We're getting rid of this guy. And we're getting rid of this guy. A says increase in acetate production. Guys, if we get rid of this one right here, right, one of the products of that bacteria is forming acetate. So if we get rid of it, we're actually going to see a decrease and acetate production, right? So it's acetate production. We see that this bacteria makes acetate, so if we get rid of it, we'll get a decrease, not an increase in acetate production, making A incorrect. Now you guys might be thinking, well, hold on. This one uses acetate, right? Um, and so if we get rid of it, maybe it'll increase the amount of acetate in, in whatever um, environment that we're looking at. And that could be true, um, depending on how much you deplete this guy versus this guy. But again, the question specifically asks increase in acetate production, okay? Not acetate presence or acetate concentration. It says acetate production. 
And the only thing that's producing acetate is this guy right here. So if we get rid of it, we're going to be getting rid of the acetate production, decreasing acetate production, making A incorrect. B says increase in use of acetate, right? So um, if we get rid of this, we're actually going to no longer use acetate. And it's going to be that actually acetate is the only energy source out of all these bacteria. So if we get rid of it, we're no longer using acetate, which means we're going to decrease the use of acetate. Now C says decrease in pH. So what is pH? pH, remember, is a it's a, it's a proxy for the concentration of um, hydrogen, or H plus ions, sorry. So if you increase this concentration, pH goes down. Keep that in mind. So let's see if we see anything about the, the H plus ions, and we do right here. And you know, lucky for us, it's actually associated with a gram-positive bacteria. So this is an energy source. And if we get rid of this, what happens? We're going to actually see more H plus in that environment because it's no longer being used as an energy source, right? And we'll notice that there's no other H plus anywhere here. So this is probably the only bacteria we need to focus on. And if we get rid of it, like I said, there's not going to be as much consumption of the H plus in the environment, which means what? H plus concentration is going to increase and pH overall is going to decrease. So C looks like a pretty reasonable answer so far. Let's look at de decrease in PS production. So what here produces P PS? Um, not anything, actually. Nothing produces PS. Um, so this, this would just be a completely irrelevant question since, again, we're looking at production of PS. And out of the gram-positive bacteria, the only thing that actually has anything associated with PS or the polysaccharides is when it's used as an energy source. So again, since nothing is producing PS, this, this answer D is just completely irrelevant to our question, making C the best answer choice. Let's take a look at question 8, and it says, based on the passage, the microbiome of CD-affected individuals result will result in which physiological change? So A says increased polypeptide digestion. If you take a look at this passage, there's no, nothing about polypeptide digestion uh, mentioned anywhere in, in this passage. So it can't be A. Now B says slower dietary fiber absorption. Um, now, it does talk about you know digesting dietary fibers, but it doesn't talk about anything about absorbing them, right? And not only that, we're looking at the GI tract, okay, the, the, the intestinal system. And the intestinal system is not responsible for absorbing dietary fibers. That's not, it doesn't actually absorb at all there. So it can't, it can't be B, since CD-affected individuals, these are individuals that have their, their intestines and their GI tract affected, um, and the GI tract doesn't absorb dietary fibers to begin with, so we know that CD can't slow down dietary fiber absorption. C says increased amount of propionate. So let's take a look at table one, and it says this means highly reduced, and this, this one right here means highly increased in CD-affected individuals. So I've just given you guys an arrow that indicates um, whether this bacteria is decreased or increased in, in CD-affected individuals. And we'll take a note um, right here that, uh, let's see, propionate right here. So this bacteria is responsible for making propionate, but we'll see that it's, it's pretty, it's significantly, you know, highly reduced in, in CD-affected individuals, as, which is given to us by this note down here, which means the, the propionate that's being made that is bacteria, it's not going to be as abundant in the CD-affected individuals, these patients. So we know that it can't have increased amount of propionate. We're actually probably looking for a decreased amount of propionate. Now, D says decreased immune tolerance. And where do we get any idea about immune, immune tolerance? Guys, let's take a look at this paragraph here. So GI tract bacteria digest, blah, 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 and convert them into butyrate, propionate, and acetate. What do these do? They modulate the innate immune system by attenuating the inflammatory response to GI tract commensal bacteria. So what does that mean? These three, they're responsible for kind of cutting down or lowering the inflammatory response to these healthy bacteria that are supposed to live in your large intestine. Okay, so let's take a look back at this passage or this, this table here. Guys, we're decreasing the amount of butyrate in the CD-affected individuals, remember? We're decreasing the propionate and we're also decreasing the acetate. And these are responsible for decreasing the the inflammatory response, the immune response to these healthy bacteria. So what happens if you decrease these, uh, the butyrates, the propionates, the acetates? We're probably going to get decreased immune tolerance. You know, you're supposed to tolerate these healthy bacteria, but if you don't have those, those three uh, short, uh, these three fatty acids, um, these three carboxylates, they're not going to be, they're not going to be attenuating the inflammatory response to GI tract commensal bacteria, like it says in the passage. So it's going to decrease your immune tolerance without those three molecules, making D the correct answer.
Question 9 states, based on the passage, to which phylum does Enterobacter most likely belong? So let's take a look at Enterobacter. Here's Enterobacter. It's a gram-negative bacteria that's upregulated, okay? Highly increased in CD-affected individuals. So let's take a look at the answer choices here. I'm seeing a lot of names that you probably don't know. And so that means the passage is probably going to tell us what these are. And there we go. So we're looking at these guys right here. Okay, so we see that, you know, uh, healthy individuals have a lot of gram-positive bacteria, these guys, and a reduced amount of these guys. But uh, CD, you know, CD-affected individuals have an increase in the number of the gram-negative proteobacteria, right? Um, whereas the number of the, this, this bacteria here is highly reduced. So they're looking at an increase of the number of gram-negative proteobacteria. Well, what do we see here? These, in CD individuals, we know that you know, the expression of this bacteria is highly increased, and we also know it's gram-negative. This paragraph just tells us that in seed individuals, they have high amounts of gram-negative proteobacteria, right? So this, this, fits, this enterobacteria fits that description exactly. So the, the answer here is probably going to be D, making D the correct answer. Let's take a look at the last question of the passage, and it says, which product is particularly reduced in CD-affected individuals? So we're looking at product. And CD affected individuals, that's probably going to, you know, that's pointing us to do table one again. And so we have the column of product. We're not going to even worry about the energy source or the, the gram status. We're only looking at the product and look at the bacteria. And we know that this asterisk means that this bacteria is, is reduced in CD affected individuals. So we're going to be specifically focusing on, on, on this bacteria right here, you know, the ones that are reduced in CD affected individuals. Since reduced bacteria means we're going to have a reduced amount of that product. So answer choice A says glucose, and then glucose isn't even on the products list, so you can just immediately rule that out. B says lactate, there we go. B says lactate, so where do we see lactate? We actually see lactate down here um, with bacteria that's upregulated in CD-affected individuals, which probably means that the lactate expression is gonna be higher in CD-affected individuals, not reduced, making B incorrect. Um, the LPS, now LPS, that stands for the lipopolysaccharides, um, again, lipopolysaccharides, that's just another product of a highly upregulated bacteria. So that means LPS expression is going to be higher in CD-affected individuals, making C incorrect. And that leaves us with butyrate. So let's see, butyrate, we see it right here, and we see it right here, we see it right here. So we see that, you know, three of the bacteria, they're responsible for making butyrate, but if they're down-regulated in CD-affected individuals, we're going to get less butyrate in the CD-affected individuals as well, making D the correct answer.